How does your school community and the greater public hear about the great things happening in your school? Newsletters? Local media coverage? A loudspeaker? I'm Brad Wilson. As a teacher, I took every opportunity to put digital media tools in my students' hands because I saw the benefit of having kids engaged while reflecting, sharing, and celebrating learning. The adventure of starting a student news team showed me that kids of all ages should be empowered to use their voices to tell the story of their school. The concept is simple yet powerful. With the guidance of dedicated adults and a few basic technology tools, a group of young people can reach a wide audience with student-driven content while gaining valuable experiences along the way. Let's meet some of the students and the educators who support them who have overcome small budgets and limited time to create sustainable programs with creativity and 21st century skills at their core. In three, two, one. Welcome to the 2012 K-12 online conference, Student Voices Trained. What does it take to start a student news team? What can a student news team do for your school? Why would kids want to be on a student news team? Good morning, Michigan Center. Today is Monday, October 1st. I'm Cassidy Curtis, alongside my clicker, Miranda Hain, bringing you the morning announcement. Our media class has been an integral part of school relations, uh, communication for Michigan Center. Not only um, important for our daily announcements, uh, we're able to address character needs as well, whether we have an issue with texting or bullying or um, if we want to uh, connect with an important cause, everything channels through our media class. Uh, they really took off with it and the kids loved seeing it in the school. The kids loved seeing themselves on tape, the students loved it, the teachers loved it. Um, we started with, with ba basically nothing and uh, Mr. View and, and our students have moved us into um, a lot with, with little and it is possible to make that happen as long as you have the support and you have someone that really has the drive and motivation to make it happen. There was really no startup cost for us. It was great and the, the principal loved it so much that she said, well we can get you a computer maybe next year and maybe we can get you some editing software. So after that it cost about 500 bucks to, to get the whole thing started to kind of where it has morphed into today. I think the research stories are like really hard. I think they're the hardest thing in this class actually because you have to pick a topic and it has to be a topic that no one else has done. So <laughs> that's really hard in itself but then you have to go research it, find all the information that you need and that you want, put all that information to a script and you have to interview people, put out surveys, all that kind of stuff. Then you have to put it all together into one big thing that everyone's going to see. My name is Colin, I'm 15 years old and I'm from the little town of Michigan Center. The big stories take a lot of time. I have already done one and it takes, first you have to research and then once you get your research you usually have to like, think of a good way to present it on the camera and it takes a lot of thinking and a lot of work. Mine I did, I did texting and driving with a partner and I feel like I was able to reach out to the whole school and tell them why texting and driving is a bad thing and that they will take it and take it into their car and do the right thing. 
it's really something to be proud of. The kids take ownership of it. They write their own stories. Uh, they they choose the direction of which this, uh, of the way this class goes. So they are doing everything. Um, I don't edit. Uh, my editors do all the editing. Uh, they put the pictures in for their larger stories. They do everything in this class, which is really the way teaching is supposed to occur. So. I'm just kind of a bystander, a silent partner, if you will. If there's something going wrong, then I step in and I'll talk to them about it or tell them how that they can improve their, their work in front of them or behind the camera. But they do all the work, so it's awesome. They, they get a lot of benefits from it. I wanted to join the media class because I've been a stage actor since I was seven years old, and um, I just wanted to get some experience in front of the camera. I've always had an interest in journalism, but I've also liked being in the camera and helping behind the scenes. And this class gave me all the opportunities to actually do those things. We use a lot of cameras. We have three main cameras that we use, and then we have a camera for pictures. And we basically use the cameras to record and also to do voiceovers. And we also have two laptops and an iPad that we use for editing and research. Or you can go onto our website, and there's a link right on the home page that says Michigan Center Announcements. Yeah. You can click that, and you, there's a list of all the videos right there. When I wondered about students who had already gone through the program, Mr. View told me I needed to meet Mason. Hi, my name is Mason Flick, and I am currently a junior at Central Michigan University. Back in high school, I was one of the first students to get involved with the media class uh, at Michigan Center High School. And the really cool thing about the morning announcements was it was an everyday thing. Everybody got to get involved and everybody got to be creative. And that's what I loved. I absolutely loved being able to be myself in front of the camera and let out that creative side of me that I couldn't let out in any other of the classes in high school. And that's why I decided to pursue broadcasting outside of high school. So right now I attend Central Michigan University where I'm involved with a number of co-curricular programs, uh, not to mention New Central 34, the student-run station there at CMU, the athletic department shooting sports, and all the other more hall television shows that I've been involved with, both in front of and behind the scenes. So it's, it's been a great experience. That wraps up our show today. I'm Paige Hill. And I'm Colin Soltis. And remember, stay, stay classy. classy. Now let's head over to Battle Creek, Michigan, where a small news program is a source of great pride. Mary Phillips, who is my technology teacher, um, my wanting to pull myself out of it and have it be something that was student directed, trying to figure out how to do that um, in a way to include our technology piece in there and to help the students who are interested in tech and media, uh, writing and producing, have them participate in the program. So that's how it came about. She said uh, whoever wants to join the WDOI, they could join it. So me and Guadalupe, we, uh, after class, we went and got some, uh, the paper. That yeah, that and we signed it out, and we signed up. And so it was pretty much the last year. To me, it looked fun. It looked fun. It really looked fun. Mm -hmm. It really looked broadcast in front of the school. Having something that's student driven um, is a benefit because um, they really want to do it. And so when you attach the responsibility piece um, to the news, we have they come to school on time, uh, they study their lines, um, they make sure they learn how to operate the equipment appropriately so that they don't damage it. So it's a morale booster for a lot of kids and it's also a self esteem booster. Um, we have children who in the past have been afraid to maybe speak up or to speak out in front of others and we have children who don't normally do that volunteering and asking to do the news so I think that that's helped also. How does it feel to broadcast in front of the whole school? Fun. Good. Kind of scared. Yeah. 
think that brings the school community um, together better. And also when children are um, broadcasting the news, students, I think, better understand and are able to connect with what a child is, is telling them will be happening at their school or what expectations are. So I think it makes it more kid-friendly for all the students in the building. We would probably use like the iPad like after school. We have like night of flight. So there would probably be like people who come and ask us questions or something. There will be somebody who is taking notes like so with the iPad school. or something. So some of the teachers would come oh. in and then they would uh like give us notes. Yes. Yeah, like Miss Rosso, she comes in, she would write it down and say she would first ask us they would first ask us, Are we doing the notes today? And then they would we, they would ask us, uh, can we like do announcements? Yeah, announcements about like whatever they're asking us for. And we would then we would do that as other news. So if a, what about if you saw something that you think should be in the news or one of your classmates saw something, could you could you suggest it so that it gets on the yeah. news? Yeah, like no bullying, probably. Where did you get the idea for no bullying? Like if someone, we saw someone when we were walking that uh, was bullying, bullying somebody. or getting bullied. A great way to find inspiration for your program is to visit the dynamic online community on SchoolTube. You'll find news teams from all grade levels and plenty of other digital storytelling examples. Our students use this platform to share locally, but to also reach a global audience of their peers. They love checking to see how many views each episode had gotten and were thrilled that their stories had reached thousands. Sharing is, by nature, at the heart of a news team, and it can easily be facilitated on today's web. Consider the benefits of starting a Twitter feed or Facebook page for your program. We found that this is how hundreds of parents were connecting with our episodes and leaving the students feedback. The next group of student voices I want you to hear come from Tenmouth, Colorado. And I know you'll be amazed at how far their team has come. Hi, I'm Grady, and I am in fifth grade. I'm the producer here at KVOB Studios, so I'm going to show you what, a little bit about what I do every morning. So every morning when I come in, I have to get the TV on. I have to get my audio blue on, which is the way that we produce or publish our shows. Also, I make sure everything is running on this soundboard here. And when it comes time for show, uh, I just make sure everything is running smooth. I've been working in the studio since second grade uh, when the studio was just uh, two computers and a microphone. But um, it's really, uh, it's been a great experience. It's something that I really like doing and I'm happy to come every morning and be part of it. Okay, so sometimes when people see our studio, they're like, oh, well, you know, we could never do that. But in reality, we started off just like uh, Grady was saying. We had uh, we borrowed a computer for somewhere else in the school because there was not a computer for a studio here, so we kind of borrowed one, and we had Audacity on it, which you know, was a free audio editing program. And we plugged in the first ones we plugged in were eight dollar microphones that we got at Walmart, and so we plugged them in and then put a splitter and then we put them in the microphone jack on the front of the the computer. And those first couple of years were rough. I mean, we we're still trying to get how the flow of K-Bob would work and all those different things. And then we kept going back to the community and, and doing a little bit of fundraising, saying, you know, we've, we've now done 100 episodes. We really like doing this. Could we have uh, a mic stand or could we have studio mics? And over the last couple of years, that's how it's kind of built. I think a lot of people need to understand that you start small, like even with just 
basic flip cameras or you know anything you can put together. And then as the students progress, I think the money will be there eventually that, that you'll be able to take it to wherever your dreams want to go. I'm Nicholas, third grade. My job in KBOB is the sound tech. I, adjust, I get the music started, make sure it's running on the TV, and uh, I get to select any of these songs and go through any of them go through all the TVs. That's something new we're, we're trying out for this year. Uh, it's still in its beta. <laughs> we're trying to figure it out how it's all going to flow. But uh, and that's another thing that um, that I constantly, with the students, I'm getting inspired. I, I I will throw something at them and then they do it. They put their age appropriate kind of spin to it, and and then we're like, wow, they can really do that kind of things. And then we can build upon their talents and their their skills to do other uh, different things. And that's where the web show is kind of going. But if you want to find out what happens next, you will have to read the book. That, sound, that sounds like a great book. Well, that's it for this week's Check Out This New Book in the Library. Back to you, fifth grade. Thanks, fourth grade. Well, let's keep moving on by showing you our fifth grade section of the web show called Tell Me a Tall Tale. Anybody who knows about the school or, or has a kid who wants or has a kid that's going to go to kindergarten or any grade level, they check out the website and they find it, they can check that out too. Well, there's over um, 6,000 subscribers and so it's all the subscribers, um, not just the subscribers but many more people that just don't subscribe but they just watch it, just listen to it. Today we saw students engage in their school community, taking ownership over meaningful tech-infused projects that help to tell the story of a learning culture. Behind the scenes were motivated teachers from a wide variety of schools who took limited resources and created a vision for what is possible.